through live stream media. <laughs> now, currently, there are quite a few churches around the world who are starting to live stream their services. And at the moment, they are only appealing to a religion and only sing hymnal songs. Now, you could say, yes, that's a good, that's a good step forward. But is the rest of the world going to be interested? And that's a brick wall we have to get past. Now, before I explain more, I'd like to talk about Creation Fest. Uh, I presume many of you have never known or heard of what Creation Fest is, but 15 years ago they started off in Weybridge, and they are, uh, they are a week camp every year in August, where uh, it is free to join, anyone can come and worship God, and the top left picture, uh, with at least uh, under half a million pound budget, but since then, 15 years on, they have dramatically improved. And you are now worshipping in a big shed. And what's going on here, yes, in a big shed. <laughs> and what's going on is that they now have a live stream with half a million funding. And the park is absolutely massive. We have over 50,000 people going in the space of the week. In the big shed itself, we have over 3,000 people attending. During that week, there are at least five different tents, and every day there are, there are lively bands, singing hymns, there are activities for everyone, so you practically cannot get bored. But the problem is, is are they appealing to the rest of the world? Now you're probably wondering, what has Eurovision got to do with this? It's a song contest. Well, think again. If we can turn to Romans 15:27-5. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another, according to Jesus Christ. This will be under teamwork. 1 Peter 4.4.10 4, As each one another has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. That will be under uh, do your best. Psalms 32.11 Sing to him with a new song, placed skillfully with a shout of joy. Again, Psalms 154. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Now, Eurovision pretty much does all of that without them realising it. As I said last year with my talk, they work very hard. And as you can probably tell, they are following the Bible without realising it. Now, with Creation Fest, if they did hard work, they could practically pull up a worship song contest. There is no reason why they can't do that, but it does require a huge amount of teamwork. And clearly God demands us to do this. A hard-working team to, live, to deliver the best visual sound and lighting and fading experience. And what does your vision do? Exactly that. Work at your best ability, take as many risks, risks as possible. Now, during the whole Eurovision season, Every song, there's always a risk being taken, whether that is changing the stage halfway through the song, which is ridiculous, but that takes three weeks of teamwork to do, or either changing stage layout to bring the audience closer to the singer. Now, imagine that in a worship festival. Atheists would, not think, would think differently to us, and that is a huge factor. Rehearsals are vital. A new song every week. Create a new song the public will love. Every year Eurovision has a different song every year, which some of you might not like, but that's not the point. The point is, the rest of the world likes them. If, you, if Creation Fest can pull off 50,000 viewers in the space of one week, and Eurovision does 200 million plus, imagine what that 200 million plus can do to Creation Fest. See my point? So doing something different, taking as many risks as possible, can create a huge effect in the world. And God says that the gospel will be preached. And this is the way forward. Creation Fest is the answer. Thank you.